My bridesmaid accepted her role in a way that hurt my heart. I asked three women to be my bridesmaids with a small gift. I asked each woman privately at their homes while visiting so it could be a heartfelt personal moment between us alone. One bridesmaid, I'll call A, is a kind-hearted woman. I've known for more than half my life, who's been with me through some serious ups and downs, including the death of a child. I have known I wanted her to be a part of my wedding for many years. She even offered to host in her backyard when I was brainstorming budget venues. A doesn't have many close friends, but I'm not her only friend, and she's significantly older than I am, so she's talked to me about plenty of weddings she's attended before. I just assumed that she'd been a bridesmaid before, since she has long-term childhood friends who are married. She's even talked about helping with setup for weddings, hence my assumption. But when I asked her to be my bridesmaid, she burst into tears and said, quote, you're so sweet. You don't have to make me one of your bridesmaids, though. Confused, I asked, quote, why wouldn't I want you to be my bridesmaid? And she said, quote, I've never been pretty enough to be a bridesmaid. I was flabbergasted. Apparently, all of her other friends asked for her help, both labor and money, but never allowed her to be in photos because she's overweight, like straight up shooed her out of the photos. I can't even imagine doing something like that to a person who's given so much of herself for me over the years. Who gives a shit what she looks like? I assured her repeatedly that she is pretty and I don't care about her weight. I care about her heart and she's done more than enough to deserve a place beside me at my wedding, whether or not she hosts it in her backyard. But I feel sad and infuriated about what was supposed to be a moment of joy and excitement between us and that it was dampered by a lifetime of others ruining her self-esteem. I feel like I'm going to lunge at her childhood friends next time I see them because I'm so pissed to find out how they treated her. She deserves better friends. Yeah. To shoo her out of photos. That's so mean. I would leave. I'd be like, okay, bye. I mean, that's something to take into consideration too, how much they use her and she's just so used to it. Yeah. That's so sad. I'm sure it's like every area of friendships with these people and she just thinks that's what she deserves. Yeah. Or it's like norm obviously normalized to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad she finally gets to be in a wedding. That's super exciting. Just... And someone that appreciates her. Yes. Yeah. Yes, hopefully karma bites her friends in the ass. Yeah. I've only been in one wedding and I don't want to be in any other one. So don't ask me to be in it. Well, if you ask me, Morgan, I would be in your wedding. <laughs> Me, I think me, good. me saying, okay, uh, yeah, I'll be in your wedding. <laughs> I'm going to make it so easy on people, though. Like, all the stress and, like, all the spending money yeah. for bridesmaids. It's like, if I ask you to be a bridesmaid, like, I'm going to pay for your dress. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to do certain things where it's like, I think it's ridiculous when people spend thousands of money for their friend to get married. Yeah. It's like, what? I like when they let them pick whatever dress they want. Mm -hmm. Like, I like that that's a thing now. Yeah. Because not everyone light, it feels comfortable in the same types of materials or shapes and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I like that. And then they all just have to follow a, a color theme or whatever i think that's really cute i think that should be the bare minimum yeah because then you can rewear it to something else like if mm -hmm. i like how it looks i'll wear it to another wedding but i'm not in the wedding you yeah know what I mean? am i in the wrong for getting my daughter in an apartment versus letting her move back in i'm 45 female my daughter mallory 24 female got married three years ago she has two children two in six months recently her husband revealed that he's been cheating on her and is leaving her for another woman they run a house but due to my daughter having no credit at the time and moving in only his name is on the lease he's giving her 30 days to move out mallory is understandably distraught I've been doing all that I can do to comfort her. She asked if she could move in with me, explaining she'd have the kids every other week. She assured me that she isn't looking for childcare. Both kids are in daycare. She offered to pay rent and ship it on groceries. Now, I've always raised my kids to be independent. I didn't kick them out at 18, but I did encourage them to start doing things on their own. Mallory moved out at 19, moving in with her soon-to-be ex. My sons are in college and plan to move out after graduating from college. They're both freshmen at the same university. I asked Mallory how her credit score was. She said she could reasonably rent. I offered to pay for her first month, last month, and a deposit, along with six months' rent. She said it's not about money. She's not wealthy by any means, but she does well for herself, and her husband is already agreeing to give her money weekly, even before they go to court. She just wants emotional support. I told her that I could do that with her living in her own place. She started to cry and said that she just needs her mom right now. I told her that she was going to be okay. My sons are pissed at me. They pointed out that I have plenty of room, that Mallory has offered to pay rent. She's also not the type to shrug off responsibility of the kids, and the toddler is well-behaved. To me, that doesn't matter. They called me heartless. My boyfriend, Freddie, 30 male, and Callum, 29 male, have been best friends since college. They were roommates and graduated together and all that stuff. Me, 30 female, and Freddie have been dating for six years and we're getting married next January. We're incredibly happy and we can't wait to have a fabulous wedding. We both deal with anxiety because we have a very high profile and demanding jobs. So we agreed to have a small wedding, simple, relaxed, and stress-free. I've shared spaces with Callum at my boyfriend's family events, parties, and he hangs out with my boyfriend a fair amount of the time. He's great. I like him. Here's the issue though. Callum does this thing where he sits or stands very still and stares into space for a long, long, long time. Freddie told me it's a thing called catatonia. 
I call that just zooming out or disassociating as Gen Z said. The problem is that my boyfriend usually babysits him when this happens. I mean, he stays right next to him the whole time. I thought it was like a nice, cute gesture, but on the day of our wedding, I mean, really? That sounds like the opposite of our dream day. He's even taller than my boyfriend, so just imagine a 6'4 guy standing in the middle of our reception next to the groom. Here's the conflict. I talked this privately with Callum, just me and him, and he agreed that he would be a distraction. He declined the invitation. I asked him not to tell anything to my boyfriend, and he said that he would be too embarrassed to say anything. I said, please don't feel embarrassed. I know it's not your fault. And we left it at that, very friendly and politely. I told him that he's more than welcome to join us for our Christmas dinner, because I know that he's not close with his family. And like I said, I like him. I told my boyfriend that Callum declined, and he was disappointed, but he agreed that less guests fitted our idea with a small, low-key, relaxed wedding. So it was still perfect. The next day, I told my mom, my sister, and my maid of honor, and they were visibly upset with me. My mom said it was an a-holy move and that it was ableist, but I don't think that's true because it's not really a disability. I think it's more about his personality and his thing that I know is going to take a toll on my boyfriend that day. I want to make sure that I was not a horrible person to pacify my conscience. So, am I in the wrong for uninviting a friend to my wedding so my boyfriend doesn't have to take care of him? I left my boyfriend after he tried to propose. I, female 20, and my boyfriend, male 27, have been together for about a year and three months. From the beginning, he has always talked about marriage and kids. I want kids and that stuff too, but definitely later in life. We would often be lying in bed and he would just say, I can't wait to do this when we're married. Personally, I don't really get it. Like, what's going to change from now when we're dating to when we're married? Our relationship will still be the same one we started with. He often would just ask me casually to marry him, and I would always just answer something along the lines of, someday. He's asked me about every month for about a year, and I always answer the same. I'm very busy and I travel for an intern job for work, so I don't really see myself settling down within the next few years. For those of you thinking that I'm leading him on, I am very open with these plans. I told him that I don't even want to get engaged until I'm at least 25 and want kids late 20s to early 30s. That's just a personal boundary and preference. Whenever I would answer seriously, he would always shut down, get quiet, and look upset. If you're wondering about our age gap, I know. We met at a work party when I was 18. We're in the same field and have the same close group of friends. He never gave me creepy or ill intentions, and the only issue we seem to have is marriage and kids. The last time he casually asked, we were on the beach about a month ago, and once again I just said, I'm not ready right now. Fast forward to two days ago, he proposed to me for real. He took me to the mountain with a waterfall and actually got down on one knee with a ring. I didn't even look at the ring before I said no. It was like a reflex. I started walking away and crying out of shock. I knew this was the end for us. I couldn't see myself getting back together with someone who just doesn't listen to me. He started crying and begging, blah blah blah. I told him that I needed time. I flew home to my family and told them what happened. Turns out, he told my family and they said that he shouldn't do it. He ignored them, never told them he was going through with it, and didn't bother to invite them to the party that he had planned after. Later found out his whole family was there. Honestly, feel great. I texted them that we're done and that the line was crossed. Unfortunately, I have to see him at work, but I don't even feel an ounce of sadness. More like relief and I'm not totally sure why. But I'm just wondering, did I do the right thing by saying no? One time a guy asked me on a date to play racquetball, which if you don't know what it is, it's it's the game where you hit the ball against the wall and then your opponent hits the ball against the wall and then you, I think that's how it works, okay? But basically you're hitting a ball against a wall and he asked me to, to play it with him on a date and I said I'd be happy to go, but I've never played racquetball before and I can't catch, throw, or kick a ball. And he was like, don't worry, you'll get it. And I think sometimes people think that I'm faking humility and I'm really being honest about how horrible I am at things and he took me to play racquetball he signed me in as a guest at his gym and then pretty quick after we got in there he was trying to teach me how to serve and I asked I don't know how I did this but I hit the ball straight down it went straight up to the ceiling and broke the light and I was like should we go tell someone and he said no we should run and we just left the gym and then he asked me out on a second date, surprisingly, and he said, do you play tennis? And I was like, no, I said, I can't catch, throw, or kick a ball. And he was like, I'll teach you how to play tennis. So he took me back to his gym. They didn't know that we were the ones who destroyed the light in the racquetball room. We went onto one of the tennis courts and he kept hitting tennis balls past my head. He was like, you'll get the next one. You'll get the next one. And I was like, I told you I'm bad at this. And then after like an hour of hitting tennis balls past my head, we ended the date and he never spoke to me again. <laughs> the dentist for the first time in seven years because I was visiting home and my mom set up an appointment with a family friend of ours who happens to be a dentist and I'm not proud of this. <gasps> I'm dropping worms all over my tub. I know that I'm an adult okay and I should go to the dentist unprompted but it's just how it happened. I had to fill out a bunch of paperwork because I hadn't been to the dentist in so long. They were like, when was the last time you've been to the dentist? And I wrote question mark. There was a box that said insurance and I wrote no. Then they checked my teeth. My teeth are perfect, no cavities. Everyone was like, you must have that magic spit 
that makes it so your teeth don't really get cavities. And I was like, awesome. And then they said, but you do have to come back because we don't have time to clean your teeth because you were so late today. Why was I late? Because I lost, my, I don't lose my keys, okay? When I was growing up, my dad would lose the keys and he'd stomp around the house like, where are the keys? Because he was running late, okay? And I was like, keeping track of your keys has to be the easiest thing in the world. When I'm a grown up and I have keys, I'll never lose them. And I don't. Every home I have ever been in, I have a special key spot except for the one I grew up in because I didn't I didn't really have keys then. So I went home to visit, misplaced my keys. The morning of my dentist appointment, I was stomping around the house yelling, where are my keys? And I realized I turned into my father. I already have his feet and his hair and now I've got his personality. So I'm stomping around the house like a T-Rex or an angry middle-aged white man. I was like, where are my keys? And my sister's trying to make me feel better. And she said, don't worry, we can just take my disgusting broken down car to the dentist. And I was like, I would rather die. I don't make car payments so that I have to drive in your gross car, sister. I paid my dues. When I was in high school, my brother and I had this snot colored Ford that we would drive to school. And it was very nice that we had a car, but the kids broke the passenger door off of it. Not kids from school, my siblings did. So whenever we, we had to crawl in through the driver's side door and if we ever gave somebody a ride, we'd be like, you need to climb in through the driver's side door. But then they would forget that the passenger's door was broken. So when we stopped, they would always try to open the passenger door and the whole door would come off the vehicle. It was duct taped on, but duct tape, not very effective, turns out. So the whole door would come off. We would have to put the door back on the car at school. Our other option for driving to school was our big, huge, like, gray 12-passenger van that my family had. The other kids called that the tank. So those were the cars we would drive to school. Anyway, after we were irreparably late, we found my keys in my fanny pack. <laughs> So I had to go back for a teeth cleaning and my gums were bleeding like crazy because any part of me would bleed if you stabbed it with a metal stick. And the lady said, I see your gums are angry. You should start flossing, which was rude because she didn't even give me a chance to lie. I was like, listen, lady, I don't know if you've heard the rumors, but I have magic spit. I don't need 